All right, so how can I start my food business online? And Damien, can I sell homemade food online? Well, these are two questions we got from subscribers and I actually broke out the dry erase board. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how this actually works. And can you sell a food product from home online? Well, yes, and a little bit of no. But I'm gonna explain exactly what I mean by that right now. All right, so welcome back. It is Damien from Marketing Food Online. It is great to see you guys again. Unfortunately, I had a little bit of health issues for about four weeks, actually. It was pretty bad, but unfortunately I'm doing, uh, fortunately I'm doing much, much better, but unfortunately I was a little bit ill, but I am back to doing my videos and I wanted to jump into a couple of questions. We had accumulated a lot of backlogs of videos. So over the next couple of weeks or so, we will be uploading a lot of videos. Plus, we started two brand new channels. We have one dedicated to food truck entrepreneurs and cottage food operators, the home-based food business idea of cottage food business, which I'm gonna to touch on a little bit with what I have back here in my diagram. But those are two brand new channels you definitely wanna to subscribe to, so hit those links down in the description below this video if you are interested in those other types of food entrepreneur videos as well. So. Damien, can I sell food online, but can I do it from my house? Well, you actually can, but to do it legally, I'm gonna break down and explain how the structure of the business model actually works. Now, to start off right off the bat, number one, you need to incorporate your business as a home business. Before we jump into how am I gonna make a food product, Damien, uh, from the house and do all of that and sell it online. Well, you're not necessarily gonna be making the food product from home, but your business will be a home-based food business. So step one, you wanna incorporate your home-based food business, okay? So that means that your house will be your quote-unquote office or your home-based business office where all of the business parts of your business will be taken care of. Sorry, sorry about sounding redundant there, but all of the business aspects will be done at your home office, okay? So incorporating your business at home is step one. Now. Step two, obviously you need to create a product. Now, when you start to do this type of business model where you wanna sell a food product online in different areas, in different e-commerce areas, it's not necessarily gonna be the type of food that you think is gonna be delivered like a pizza, a sandwich, a sub, or some chicken wings or something like that. This is not for that type of a business. You can create a packaged food product, which is literally infinite, the amount of different packaged food products. That could be anything from chips to snacks to trail mixes, to even cookies, believe it or not, or anything that can be packaged, put into a warehouse, and then shipped to a customer. And I'm gonna explain the whole process, how this works. So you wanna create the product. Now, obviously the FDA has specific guidelines as to what needs to be on the packaging. So obviously the few things that need to be on there, number one, is the name of the product, the net weight of the product, the nutritional analysis for the product itself, the ingredient listing, the allergen warning, and all of that good stuff, okay? so. These basic things are on every single packaged food product that sits on a shelf or in a warehouse being ready and set to go and be shipped to a customer. So you have to create the packaged product itself. So determine what type of product you can make and it has to really truly be shelf stable, shelf stable, sorry about that. So it has to obviously be able to sit on a shelf for a while before it actually gets pulled off and shipped to a customer, okay? So creating your product, incorporate, create the product. Next up, you have two options. You can actually do this in two different ways. This is where the technical part of the food production end starts. It could go to either to a co-packer. A co-packer, if you do or do not know, is basically a company that says, hey, Damien, we'll be happy to make that granola mix for you. Okay, not a problem. We're gonna charge you about 20 cents, 25 cents extra to make it per bag. So if you gotta do it, we're gonna do 5,000 units, we're gonna make your product, and we're gonna produce it for you. So we're gonna bring together the ingredients, we're gonna bring together the process, we're gonna bring together the packaging. So all of that constitutes a finalized product that's sealed, bagged, crimped, set, set, ready to go. Now obviously it may not have to be in a bag, it could be in a container, it could be in a box. The packaging itself is not necessarily the important aspect of it, but any type of packaging that you've got, you wanna make sure that it's finalized and ready to go. Now, your co-packer is one avenue, or you can rent a commercial kitchen. Now, back to what we said before, can I sell a food product from home? Well, technically, the food product is not actually being made at home. It can be produced in a commercial kitchen, which is a rented com commissary or commercial space, which is licensed, inspected, and insured 
by that specific area with that commercial kitchen where it's at. So that allows me, let's say Damien, so I could go over and rent a commercial kitchen. I could produce 500 bags of my granola mix and then ship it. Now, Damien, where are you gonna ship it from? And where are you gonna ship it to? Most commercial kitchens, you have to find out specifically the one you're renting. Most commercial kitchens will allow you to package it and box it and even ship it from their facility. If you have the ability <clears throat> to print up the shipping label, you can do that. Now, Damien, where am I gonna ship it to? We create the product, we have a co-packer either make it for us or we make it ourselves. Then it goes to what's known as a fulfillment center. Now, fulfillment centers, a good example of that would obviously be Amazon FBA. Fulfillment by Amazon. Now that process, I've done a handful of videos here about Amazon and how it works. Amazon FBA is a warehousing of your products and they sell it on the platform you create a storefront on Amazon and your customer buys it. Someone, let's say John buys a product from Damien's Amazon store. Amazon pulls the product out of the inventory, they put it in a box and they ship it and they're done. Your job as the business owner is to make sure that it is filled. The warehouse has enough of your product, okay? So back to, let's go back to what I said in the beginning. Can you start, can I sell homemade food products online? Well, yes and no, because technically, again, you're not making it at your house, but you can operate the business aspect of it, have a business license for a home-based business in your home, and all of the other physical put together, all of the packaging, all the product, everything else is done outside of the home itself. And that way you can take advantage of the home-based business tax benefits also, and your product is technically not made at home and is shipped to a warehouse where it's gonna be fulfilled. Now, Amazon is not the only fulfillment center out there. There are fulfillment centers everywhere and they're popping up in droves nowadays because of e-commerce. So if you don't wanna go the Amazon route, you find yourself a fulfillment center. You can literally go to Google and type in fulfillment centers with an S, fulfillment centers, and there will be a huge list of all kinds of facilities that would be happy to take your product, put it in their warehouse. You don't have to touch it. You don't have to ship it. You just have to either make sure your co-packer is making it the way you're supposed to be making it, or you can make it in a commercial kitchen and then ship all of those products over to the fulfillment center. Once the order gets filled, those fulfillment centers, if you're selling on Amazon, Shopify, if you're selling on eBay, Etsy, Walmart, WooCommerce, BigCommerce, doesn't matter. All of these different seller platforms work the same. And most of these fulfillment centers, by the way, have actual software integration with these platforms. So they know when there is an order. In some cases, it can be completely automated. If somebody gets an order on your eBay store, that fulfillment center knows exactly that you've got an order and they fulfill it. They're just gonna say, hey, Damien, your inventory is running low in the fulfillment center. We need more of your product. Okay, no problem. I'll have my co-packer make it for me and send it over to the fulfillment center. So yes, back at home where you're actually running that on your laptop, your business, you need to maintain inventory in that aspect of the business and make sure that it's running properly and smooth with your co-packer or you make it yourself in a commercial kitchen. So can I sell homemade food online? You most certainly can legally, but it has nothing to do with cottage food law at all. Operate your business, right? The business side of it from home. Have someone produce the product. You're physically not doing it at home. Make it from a co-packer, do it in a commercial kitchen, ship it out to the fulfillment center and run the e-commerce aspect of your business from home. So. If you have a great idea for a sauce, a packet, a seasoning, a granola mix, whatever it is that you can put into a package and create a shelf stable item, then this business model may be something you really need to look into. Because the great thing about this is that there's no limit to the amount of products that you can make. If you created one season blend, I would bet you you could probably create 10 different season blends, have a co-packer manufacture them, send them to your facility to fulfillment, and they will handle all the shipping to all of your platforms. So you create your own store and you're good to go. Now, a few pointers and tips for the legality side of doing this. Make sure you are following your city and county and even your state, but specifically the city and county has a business licenses and requirements that vary. So I can't speak on behalf of every single, obviously in the entire United States, but make sure that you follow up and make sure you have the right business license Make sure you have food business insurance. Now, let's go back here really quick. Even though a co-packer or you're making it in a commercial kitchen, 
you still need to incorporate and insure your food business. Their insurance policies have nothing to do with somebody who could get sick with your food product because you're the one making it. Tax exempt. You need to also make sure that you're not paying double taxes. Well, Damien, what the heck does that mean? In your state, you need to make sure that you get a tax exempt certificate. When you buy ingredients to produce a finalized product, if you're buying it from a company, let's just say spices, and you came across a spice company online and they're charging you tax. And you say, hey, hold on, wait, 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 wait. I got a tax exempt because I'm gonna collect tax when I sell it on these platforms. So I'm not gonna get taxed twice. So if I bought a bunch of season blends from this guy and I'm paying taxes and then I'm gonna collect taxes again, you need to make sure that they're not charging you tax. So you need to get a tax exemption, okay? And then also make sure that you're collecting sales tax and you're remitting it to your state. Your state department, uh, um, state department uh, within your state has a website page that is dedicated to revenue. It's the Department of Revenue. And in your state, you need to make sure that you're collecting sales tax within the state for those sales. And e-commerce is a whole nother gamut of information about taxation as well when it comes to selling tax and taxing an item that's being sold over state lines. So make sure you do this too as well. Don't just think this is some easy path to uh, creating a business and you're gonna scale it overnight or in a week or so. Make sure that you're doing things the right way and you're checking on those specific business licenses, permits, and other sales tax issues as well, okay? So yes, you can. If you're looking to create a home-based food business, you can actually do it this way. Just be sure that you're following the guidelines within your city and your county to do it. But this is a great way to get started online because e-commerce is the future when, when it comes to food. Grocery stores left and right, they are now offering huge e-commerce websites within their own brand like Kroger's and Publix and uh, Wagman's and all of these other companies. They're having uh, food being delivered, shipped. They're even tapping into other marketplaces and selling their food products on there. So you can do the exact same thing. And this is the way to do it. So if this was helpful, if you had questions about this, let me know down below. I always appreciate a big thumbs up. And thank you everybody for the uh, nice uh, greetings and comments. Uh, about my illness. Unfortunately, I am uh, back, on, back on track and I will see you guys on our next video.